Have you ever done a technical interview where you left feeling off? Like you couldn't exactly pinpoint what was wrong, but you just didn't feel good about it. Well, this is the right video for you since I'll be talking about red flags in technical interviews and tips for spotting them. So keep watching and subscribe to this channel for more videos for software engineers. Hi, I'm Yulia Eskin, a Silicon Valley tech lead and a career coach for software engineers. This is the right channel for you if you want to get promoted, become a tech lead, or just be a better engineer. So let's dive in. I definitely remember some negative interview experiences, whether it was an interviewer canceling an hour before the interview when I took a day off for it, or people just being rude and interrupting me. In any case, I want to remind you that the goal of an interview is for the company to assess your skill set and your fit to their company and for you to assess the company back. Is this a company that has interesting work for you? Are these the group of people that you would want to work with? And does this company have a good working environment for you? In this video, I want to talk about different red flags that you should watch out for when you're interviewing and different tips on spotting them and recognizing them. So keep watching. So here is number one and the worst offender being asked the legal questions. Did you know that some questions a company is actually not allowed legally to ask you? I personally didn't even know about this until my company trained me to interview software engineers. So I want you to remember that a company, first of all, is not allowed to ask you anything that's not even relevant to the job. And especially it's not allowed to ask you about your religion, about your sex, sexual orientation, race, greed, and more. The reason these questions are illegal is to prevent discrimination. So for example, a company is not allowed to ask you what is it like to be a Russian immigrant woman in tech or when are you planning to start a family however on top of that there's a category of questions that companies usually avoid to ask just because they don't want to be sued because that information can still bias a hiring decision. And when I was trained to interview others, I was also told never to ask a person where they live or how long their commute is and where they're from. And the reason for that is this. I used to have a coworker that lived three or four hours away and he had to commute six hours a day to work. I was personally shocked when I discovered that. But the reason employers are not asking about that is because it's the employee's personal decision where they live and how far they live. And the employer shouldn't bias their hiring decision on whether somebody is going to want to make the commute or not. That is why companies avoid asking such questions that are not relevant for the job. The next major red flag to watch out for is any indication of a toxic and negative work environment. And the reason you should really watch out for this, it's because it's very hard to change a toxic work environment. So here are some examples of how you can spot that during an interview. First of all, are most people stressed or frazzled? Do you get questions like, how well can you handle stress? What if there's a fire in the technical sense? How are you gonna go about it? Watch people's tones. Are they nervous? Are they stressed? Are they speaking up like this? I personally had that happen to me in an interview where someone was literally asking me, what would you do if people are screaming at you? What would you do if they say there's a fire? You have to drop everything and go help with that. For me, that was a really big red flag. Of course, every company sometimes has crunch time. Sometimes there's a horrible bug and everybody needs to deal with that. But when somebody asks you that in an interview, it means that it's not an isolated incident. It means that it's something that happens fairly regularly and that's why they're asking asking you that in an interview to see if you're going to be okay with working in that kind of environment. Another way to spot a negative work environment is when you ask your interviewers about their experience at the company, what do they enjoy about working there, and what are some issues they see that they basically seem pretty depressed, stress, they're not happy or excited, and they start complaining either about people they work with or about some systemic issues. For example, if they mention some systemic issues, such as issues with prioritization, coordination between teams, or basically projects not being managed well. This is in general really important to notice. When you are sensing that there's a systemic issue, as in it's not an isolated incident, it's something that's not just going to happen to one person or one team, but it's something that just happens in this company. Basically, when you are going to work there, don't expect that you would be able to change something systemic. Systemic issues often need to change from above with the leadership change. Next, if you are someone who likes to ask about the company's culture, about things like diversity, about things like how many people of color work there, how many women work there, and you feel that that question is being met with contempt or sarcasm, that's a really big red flag. I know myself that as a minority in tech, I do 
ask about these things because they're important to me. And if I feel like the interviewer sitting in front of me is not taking that question seriously, it means that they don't even understand the importance of diversity. And for me, that's a huge deal breaker because if I do come to work there, I can just imagine how many of my experiences are going to be negative and not taken seriously by my management. Lastly, as you walk around in the office, get a feel for the vibe. It's a hard thing to pinpoint and explain, but when you're walking around the office and you see people with their heads down, no one is smiling, people look stressed, people look depressed, you see a conversation between people and you can sense tension and hostility, that's indicative of a negative environment. And I know this from personal experience. I remember interviewing in an office that just had that negativity in the air versus I remember interviewing for a company I ended up working for where I entered and I just felt this immediate joy and ease and fun and people being excited about what they do. Always trust that feeling you get when you're just walking around an office. And the third negative red flag are bad manners. And what do I mean by that? Basically, most good companies really care about good candidate experience, even if that candidate ends up not being a good fit for them. They still want you to have a good experience because they value you and because maybe one day they will want to hire you. So if you're interviewing someone and people are rude, they're not welcoming, they're not friendly, it's a negative sign that they don't care about your experience being interviewed there. Pay attention if people offer you water, pay attention if people remember that you need a bathroom break. Also, for example, if you're in an on-site interview where you typically have five interviews in one day and you are made to wait a really long time between interviews and you're not being told what's happening and you're basically feeling trapped in that interview room, that's negative because somebody dropped the ball on what's happening to you and didn't come communicate that to you. And another way to spot this red flag is when you're being interviewed, especially in a technical interview, where you are expected to speak about your solution, you're expected to explain your approach, you really should be doing 95% of the talking. If in that kind of technical interview, you are being interrupted, you are not being listened to, that's a huge red flag. Because the whole point of a technical interview is to hear you speak about the solution and to hear how you think. And if the interviewer is not letting you do that, that's definitely an issue. So if you're a junior engineer just starting out in tech, Take a look at my website and see how I can support you as a career coach so that you navigate your first year with ease. And the fourth red flag is from a technical perspective. Let me give you some examples. If you're having a technical interview and you feel like the interviewers are just not able to explain a problem or a solution well, it's a bit of an issue. Now remember that there's a difference between an interviewing not fully specifying a problem. That is actually a strategy in interviews. They don't wanna give you all of the information because they expect you to ask questions and to ask for more requirements. That is okay. But if you feel like they spend five minutes describing a problem and things are just super confusing, super unclear, this is a bit of an issue. It might mean that these interviewers didn't think about a good problem, they picked something too complicated, they're basically setting you up to failure. Now definitely do your best, ask for more information, ask for clarifications, reiterate to them how you understand and think about the problem. But if you get the sense that they're basically just not experts, you're offering a solution and they can't really comment well on it, they don't understand what you're saying, maybe they even know less than you about this, then it's a bit of a red flag. Why was that person chosen to interview you? Is this company going to be a place where you can grow or is your skill level too high for this position. And another negative behavior in a technical interview is if the interviewers are basically letting you be stuck on a problem for a really long time without offering any hints or any guidance. And they're just basically watching you suffer. I've definitely had that happen to me. And you know what? When I was being trained to interview others, I was actually told never to do that. The whole premise of a technical interview is that the interviewer and the interviewee are collaborating in this. If you are not able to make progress on this question, the interviewer is supposed to offer some suggestions and some hints to basically allow you to complete as much as you can. The goal of a technical interview is for a company to see how you think. And if you get stuck because you don't remember something trivial, it's not really going to help them assess your overall skill level. For that reason and for a good candidate experience, 
interviewers should really help you if you get stuck that is what they're trained to do and even in the case that you are just not able to solve it that interviewer is actually supposed to just tell you what the approach would have been and to try to explain the solution to you because they still want to leave you feeling good they don't want to leave you feeling dumb now the worst possible red flag in a technical interview is if somebody tells you that you failed basically from a legal perspective none of your interviewers are allowed to tell you how you did and even if you ask them they're not allowed to give you this is to protect the company from a legal perspective so if an interviewer basically goes out and tells you that you did this wrong this is bad you failed this and then just stops the interview and doesn't want to continue that is a huge red flag companies that stop interviews midday and tell you to leave are the worst possible companies and please don't ever go to work there and the last red flag i want to talk about is people's relationships to each other now what does this mean if you heard one of your interviewers saying something negative about another person who's not in the room or you're interviewed by a bunch of people and they're either making snarky remarks about each other or you just pick up on a lot of tension and hostility that's not a good sign because that means that these people who are on the same team they do not get along and imagine if you work with these two people what would it be like to actually accomplish something when two people are in such bad terms so definitely pay attention to people's dynamics especially people that you are supposed to be working with if you were to get hired so here are some tips on how to spot and deal with these red flags so number one remember that both you and the company are interviewing each other and if you're feeling like this company is not trying to impress you they're not trying to convince you to join them that is a bit of a weird thing doesn't it shouldn't they want to attract you shouldn't they want your talent and your skill set there if they're doing the bare minimum to be nice and appealing to you it's definitely a red flag think about it if you started working there are they going to value and recognize you as an employee? Are they going to appreciate the effort and the work that you're doing? And the bottom line here is that you deserve to feel excited about this job. And that means that they also need to be excited about you. And my second tip on being able to recognize red flags is to actually, even before you go to the interview, be very clear on what's important to you in that interview experience and in the company and what isn't. This way you'll be able to spot your deal breakers very quickly. And my third tip is after the interview is over and you go home and you have time to really process the interview and everything that happened there ask yourself a day or two later do you see yourself working there for the next two or three years of your life in those next few years do you see yourself excited about working under product and technology do you see yourself happy and productive in that particular team working on that product it's very important that you notice how you feel when you think about showing up every day for the next two or three years in that company and if you have a negative feeling then i would say definitely don't choose a job for the next two or three years of your life you're going to feel bad or if you're ambivalent simply give yourself the space to interview more believe me there's a company out there for you that is going to appreciate you and reward you for the work that you do and my last tip for you is to take it very seriously if you picked up on signs that this is a negative and toxic work environment and especially if somebody did something that specifically made you feel hurt or bad it's one of those flags that i definitely wouldn't ignore because it's very difficult to change a toxic work culture and just imagine that Without work culture you might get bullied people might be offensive to each other and definitely not productive in order for a cultural shift to happen a lot of the times the leadership of the company needs to change and even more changes need to happen in different levels of management so that overall the culture becomes more positive and don't expect that to happen overnight it usually takes years for a company to shift from a negative to a positive work culture and even more importantly if a company has a toxic work environment it means that the current people who work there are basically contributing to it and that management and leadership are just perpetuating it if you think that leadership is not aware of something like that believe me they are people talk and complain about such environments to their managers and there's no way that they would not be informed they're just tolerating it and thinking that that's okay but it's not okay and you deserve a much better work environment so I hope that this video shed some light to you on red flags to watch out in an interview. Tell me in the comments, have you had a negative interview? Which of these red flags did you notice? Did you stick to your guns and went to a better company? Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you're a junior engineer who's just starting out in tech and you would like some support from me as a career coach, please check out my website on different career coaching packages. And
and ways that I can support you as you navigate tech for the first time. Thank you and see you in the next video.